Hello, hello, good morning. It's Monica from Life is Art, and this is the Friday 10 a.m. technique at the Summer Vacation Road Trip online crop. We are going to be looking at doing a little bit of a different sort of technique with some inking, and we're going to be using the stamp of the month. And the reason we want to use the stamp of the month is because if you're a VIP, you can get that stamp of the month free with your $60 order. And if you are um, putting in a $60 order and you're not a VIP, you can get it for a discounted rate of $675. And everybody usually loves the stamp of the month. It's always such an awesome stamp set. Good morning, Mary. Nice to see you're watching. And so the stamp set for July, the stamp of the month, is this one called Voice of the Sea. It's a gorgeous stamp set with just stunning artwork in it. It has some beautiful underwater as well as uh, above water images. So we've got this sea turtle. We've got some underwater vegetation and coral and starfish. There's some shells. We've got um, a beautiful fish and a crab. And then we've also got a seagull, so above water that way. And then also some sentiments. The voice of the sea speaks to the soul. Time to relax that we used on our card yesterday. Thanks. Hello. Sending good vibes your way. And it just creates gorgeous, gorgeous artwork because when your stamps start out this pretty, it's hard to go wrong. So that is the stamp of the month. And um, so if you are um, loving that stamp, then you'll definitely want to try and get it out at discount or free because, hey, who doesn't like something cheaper or free? So we are going to start out with a card front that has been cut to... Uh, let me measure three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. And everybody always looks at that go and goes, Oh, thanks. Thanks for doing that. <laughs> thanks for making it a hard measurement. And you'll notice that I'm kind of lining it up on my Versa mat. And you can see that I'm centering it at the six inch mark here. And that's important because I know what, um, what the distance is here. I can figure out where my center is and equally space it. And for the technique that I'm going to do today, that is super important because we're going to do some measuring for this technique. The first thing that we're going to need is we're going to need some washi tape. And this doesn't have to be pretty washi tape because it's not staying on your project. We're just using it to mask part of our white daisy cardstock, okay? So the other thing that we want to take into consideration is that you want to use the washi tape, A, that you're not terribly fond of, but B, is not too tacky. Mine is a little bit tacky. So the solution for that is to take your washi tape and pounce it on your pants or on your shirt and pick up a little bit of lint <laughs> so that it doesn't stick as much. Because when we remove it from our white daisy, we don't want to accidentally tear any of the cardstock. So I'm just going to go ahead and pounce it up and down. You'll probably hear that sound on my pants a few times. And then I'm going to go over here and lay it right centered on that six inch line. Okay. Just like that. And then I'm going to take another strip. Again, I'm going to pounce it on my jeans, pick up, hopefully my jeans are a little bit linty and pick up some lint on it. And then we're going to line it up here. Let me see. We want to try and get it as close to the center as we can. I didn't really line it up from side to side on the Versa mat so much as I did vertically. So I'm kind of eyeballing it. And sure, we'll say that's the center. <laughs> and then we're going to do it again. We're going to pounce some more. Pick up some lint. Good morning, Katie. Good morning, Grace. Nice to see you're watching. Everybody's up on a Friday morning. For those of you who are on summer vacation, makes it a little bit easier. All right, now we also want to mask off the edges. 
but I'm only going to use half the width of my washi tape to mask the edges. So I'm just going to put it half on. And actually, this one works really well because it's got a chevron. So I know the point of the chevron is about the center of my washi tape so I can line it up good. But also the lines in my on my Versamat help me to um, do that. Because it's not super um, it's opaque like some kinds of tapes would be, uh, washi tape is good for this because you can kind of see through it a little bit. So we're, what we're creating is a nice little four window grid. Now if you had a stencil that was cut with four windows like this, then you could totally just go ahead and use a stencil for this. But for those of us who don't, good morning, Carol. Um, we can just go ahead and use our washi tape. And I will also show you when the time comes how to, the best way to remove your washi tape to avoid having too much of your cardstock um, get peeled if it is a little bit too tacky. So there we go. We've created our nice little four square grid. Cool. That's awesome. What are we going to do with it? <laughs> so this idea actually is not um, original to me that I'm doing today. This idea was presented by Laura Beecham, who is another close to my heart maker. And when I saw her photo of what she was creating, I was like, oh, it's so cool. Got to try it. Got to show my ladies how to do it. And so that's why we're doing it. The other thing that I think is kind of useful is to take a piece of just um, scrap paper, printer paper, scratch paper, whatever you've got on hand, and trim out a corner with a 90 degree angle so that we can kind of lay it here and cover up um, the other sections just in case, because we're going to do some ink blending, just in case our sponge tends to run over. Plus, sometimes if you get ink on the washi tape and then you go to the next one and you try a different color, it'll pick up a little bit of the ink off the washi tape. So if we have a nice little blocker like this, where you just take a piece of paper and use your trimmer or your scissors and cut a 90 degree, then we can kind of limit that. We could even stick it down, but I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to hold it as I work. So I'm going to actually use four colors. So four different colors for my four sections. So I'm going to be using Sundance. I'm going to be using Glacier. Hopefully I'm getting them in the frame there. Glacier. I'm going to be using Papaya. And I'm going to be using Carolina. Those are the four colors that I'm, I'm going to be using. Because those are the four colors that I have that kind of look uh, decent together. And, um, you know, they're kind of that beachy feel. You know, because we're kind of going with the, the beachy. And you'll notice that I've got a whole handful <laughs> of little uh, ink blending tools. And I've got one for each of the colors. So let's start with the sun mats. We'll move the other ones out of the way. Do, 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 do. Like so. And I'll put the, the colors back where they belong. <laughs> Got to keep myself organized. So we're going to start with Sundance. And for doing this, it's really not that hard. The only thing to um, keep in mind is our sponge is around and it's flat. So if I inked it up and I just stuck it down, um, I'm going to get a circle. And I don't necessarily want a circle. I want some nice ink blending. Good morning, Shannon. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink up my little sponge here on my ink blending tool and you could use um, sponge daubers, you could use blending brushes, you could use any anything that will get ink on there. So I'm going to ink it up and then instead of going straight down I'm going to come at it kind of on an angle. So instead of holding straight up I'm going to tip it a little bit to the side but then I'm also going to start going in a circular motion before I hit my paper. <laughs> okay. So it's kind of like the wind up to throwing the baseball. You get going first. So I'm going to ink and then I'm going to start circling and I'm going to come in from the edge. And I'm not necessarily going to fill the entire uh, rectangle that I've created. Okay. I'm going to kind of leave some of it open. Oops. 
and it's going to create just sort of a little rustic mm, kind of relaxed glow in this rectangular area okay and that's it that's all the color I need to add if you want to add more color you just keep going back in and add more color the harder you push the um, the the more ink you'll get on there good morning Michelle and so that is our sun bands that we've added there and then we're going to bring in some glacier right here some glacier ink and now I want to use my little mask and we're going to cover up this part of the page okay so we're going to be inking glacier in this one we're going to do the same technique we're going to ink it up we're going to come in at an angle now I want to kind of start on this side and work my way in so we'll start swirling and then we'll come off the paper onto our image area into our blank space and just gently at first and then if we want more color we add it later try to avoid too many weird marks <laughs> and sometimes it's unavoidable it just happens and sometimes your washi tape lifts up on you just stick it back down because <laughs> we did take as much stick off as we could to keep it from being too harsh okay so I'm just gonna kind of do I'm actually kind of doing sort of in a straight line on this one and that's okay we're kind of mixing it up so let's move our mask and replace it down here so this is nice because we've cut one corner and we can just keep shifting it around and around so that we can use it for all the different angles let's bring in our Carolina ink for this one <clears throat> And we're going to ink down in this corner. Of course, I'm right, right handed, so my mask is in the wrong spot for my right hand to hold it. <laughs> and we're just going to add some blue. Carolina blue is such a pretty color. And we're just going to go around, make sure my washi tape is sticking. That's a good sign, though. If it's peeling up a little bit, that means it's not going to be stuck so hard down that you won't be able to get it off <laughs> that was the idea we want it just enough but not too much it's a fine delicate balance that one all right so let's get maybe a little bit darker just in the corner there there we go looking good we've got three of our colors done so let's shift our mask around again and we're going to go to our last color which is the papaya such a fun color now when I go to do my stamping on here you're gonna say but those colors don't really match um, what you're stamping but that's okay I think that's the beauty of what I'm gonna do and you're gonna see it it'll be kind of like a reveal um, because it's kind of unexpected but this is a super simple way of creating a card front so fun and I think it would work on scrapbook pages as well now I find that the papaya ink <laughs> is a little bit temperamental and hard, um, hard to blend, and I don't know why, but I just find it that way. Well, I'm just going to go over the whole thing and get some papaya everywhere, a little bit more in that corner. All right, and now we can start doing some stamping with that gorgeous stamp of the month. Let me just scooch that out of the way. And for this, we're going to just use our black ink. So I've got my intense black ink. And normally, I would do my stamping over here. But I kind of want to keep my, um, my sticky thing happening. So <laughs> this is where you have to kind of weigh and balance the stamping quality. Because stamping on the foam is much better than stamping on here. So I could, let me see, let's see. I could maybe try and lift this and move it over there with the washi tape still stuck on it. It might go, because the stamping quality is much better when you've got foam under it. So let's see. The, the washi tape has done most of its job already. There we go. 
So we'll just scooch it over to this side. How easy was that? Not too bad. All right, we'll just kind of stick it down a little bit. Okay, so we've got our ink. It doesn't have to be the intense black ink, but that's just the ink that I have. And I've got my stamp block, and now we need to get those fun Voice of the Sea stamps. We're going to start with... What are we going to start with? We'll start with the seagull. We're going above, above the sea first. So we're going to peel that off, and I like to walk my fingers under my stamp so that I make sure I get everything coming along. And I like to put it down for a second and then pick it up with my block. So we're going to ink this up and we're going to stamp our seagull, but we only want to stamp it in this corner. Okay, so I'm going to put my mask back down, but I do want to remove some of the tape over here because I want it to look like my image is coming out of the box I have created. So we've kind of created little color boxes, right? but I want my image to look like it has a bit of freedom to come outside the box. <laughs> it's like coloring outside the lines. So I'm going to go ahead and ink up my nice little seagull here and then just line it up and stamp it right on down in that quadrant. And you can see why it's important to keep hold of that in paper mask because it's blocking anything from stamping in weird places. And then we can pick that up and we'll move on to the next section. I think we'll come over here and let's just see. Let's just peel a little bit of that washi off <laughs> so we can put our mask down. It's all good. We're done with that part. And then we can go ahead and stick this down here like this. And we want to remove a little bit of the washi at the top. You can see when I'm peeling my washi, I'm not pulling straight up. I'm pulling off to the side, nice and low, flat against, um, flat against the paper. And that's important. Let's just pick that right off. Just pull it off. We'll be done with it. <laughs> and the next stamp that I want to use is the little crab. So let's take our seagull off. Again, walking my fingers, walking my stamp off the block. I will clean them later, or I not. I don't always clean my stamps um, unless I'm doing uh, weird color changes. And then I'm going to pick it up with my block, like so, and ink it up. Now this one is a lot bigger than this, the little rectangle that we've got here. So I want to kind of aim to have most of my crab in there, but this little sort of um, clam trail that's happening here, I want that to kind of go off out of, the, out of the box a little bit. So we'll just stamp them down there like that. And you can start to see that we're adding color to our stamped images without having to color them. I think that's the beauty of this technique. We, we're not coloring our images. We're just using that little bit of ink blending to add all the color that we need. So then let's go ahead and we'll take this mask right off all the way down. And we're also going to peel this one. Uh, we'll peel it back a little ways, just like that. <laughs> Don't plan on reusing your washi tape for this one. You'll have to get new washi tape each time. So then we can go ahead and block off the extra portions there. And this time, let's use the little fish. So let me walk this off my stamp block and get the little fish. There we go. Plop. And I always find this one's a little bit hard because it's hard to tell... <laughs> You have to really look at the nose to get the right angle because of the way the coral is. You think you want to go this way, but your fish would be, you know, zooming up through the water. We want it to be just sort of gently floating. This is about serenity here <laughs> on this um, on this card. So this one, we're going to have sort of the nose of our fish and a bit of the coral coming out of the colored area. Like so. So fun. 
Isn't this fun? Now, because I'm explaining it, I'm going a little bit slower. If you were doing this on your own, you could just whip this up. Easy peasy. And then the last one, we're using every single um, critter stamp on this one. Creature stamp. <laughs> and so we're next is our turtle. I love this sea turtle. Oh my goodness. I don't know what it is about turtles, but they are so fun. <laughs> so this time we're going to remove this piece of masking. And let's move this one as well. So we can go a little outside the box. So you can see how I'm pulling it nice and flat against itself. Oops. There we go. We'll just pick it off there. And then we can put our mask down like so. Ink up our turtle. Good morning, Ina. We are learning about inking and masking and coloring without having to get out any markers or anything. We're adding color to our images. There we go. Here's our little sea turtle. We're letting a couple of the bubbles kind of come outside the box. There we go. Lovely. Okay, now we get to reveal what it's all looking like underneath all of this. So let's take off our rest of our washi tape. I think this is so fun. I always love this when I do watercolor painting and I go to take <laughs> the um, the tape off the edges. It's always like the big reveal, right? Like what does it look like with the edges all nice and neat after you've been slopping paint all over it? And I think this time I managed to get nothing pulled off by the washi tape. Look at that. Oh, just a tiny little touch there. Isn't that cute? I love that effect that you get with that color blocking and inking and it just, oh, it's so pretty and serene and peaceful. Hey, uh, Marilyn, nice to see you're watching. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, so now let's finish up our card. We're going to add a little bit of black cardstock in behind this one. So this was cut to, let me remind myself, three and seven eighths by five and one eighth. And then this is four by five and a quarter. And we're just going to go ahead and layer these one on top of the other. My scissors were trying to come along for the ride. <laughs> so we're just going to go ahead and layer those up. Let's see if I can grab the backing. I'm getting better at it today. <laughs> this past week I haven't been able to grab the backing strips. I had to use the pokey tool. Okay, so now we can center this on the black. Try to get it centered. And then let's bring in our card base. So this is one of our pre-scored uh, weight cards, bases and envelopes, value pack cards. And so there's a score line with a bump and the other side has the dip. So you want to always fold with the bump side to the inside, just like that. And then we can go ahead and layer this on here. And because we cut that black paper just a quarter of an inch smaller than the four and a quarter by five and a half card size, we are going to get a nice little white rim around the edge as well. So we're getting some nice layers, a nice little frame for our beautiful inking, which is always a fun way of doing it, having a nice little frame around the edge, like so. There we go. And then we want to add our sentiment. And the sentiment I want to use is the sending good vibes your way. And for that, I'm going to do it on black cardstock. And I'm going to use white heat embossing. So I've got my white embossing powder and I've got my Versamark ink that helps that embossing powder stick where I want it. But to keep the embossing powder from sticking where I don't want it, I've got my anti-static pouch here and I'm just going to rub it on my paper. Adds a tiny little dusting of starchy stuff on there and that keeps the plastic embossing powder because embossing powder is basically plastic it keeps it from sticking 
where you don't want it. And because we all know that plastic is very staticky. So we've got a little piece of scrap paper here because we're going to need that to collect our embossing powder when we dump it onto our image. So let's ink up our sentiment with our Versamark ink, just like that. And I'm going to stamp it right on there, sending good vibes your way. Then we can sprinkle on our embossing powder. I love heat embossing. <laughs> it's just so fun. And I like especially doing white heat embossing on black cardstock. It looks so crisp and lovely and really kind of pops. Plus it adds a little bit of shine. And then we can just dump that back in there. It always looks like you sprinkle on so much and you think it's never going to last. But let me tell you, I heat emboss all the time. And I have had this heat embossing powder for probably six years. <laughs> and I am um, probably two-thirds of the way through it. So, you know, unless you're mass producing stuff. Um, it will last a long time. Now, I recently purchased these tweezers, which is fabulous for holding things you're going to heat emboss. I'm going to warm up my heat tool. And um, as I'm doing that, I'm going to explain. I always hold it up off the surface of whatever I'm working on. Because I don't know, you know, maybe my um, the finish on my table will be affected by heat or anything else I'm working on. So I hold it up. But also, the, the hot air can swirl around the paper, and it actually makes the heat embossing go quicker than just laying it down on your surface. So I always hold it up in the air, and because I've got these tweezers now, I can do it without getting my fingers as warm as it does sometimes. And there, it just changes from dry and powdery to shiny and beautiful. I just love heat embossing. It's so fun. Now, the, there's a little bit of residue from that um, anti-static pouch. And all I do for that is you could, let me see, let me be more refined. Usually I just rub it on my pants <laughs> or on my shirt. But I'll just take a tissue and give it a little wipe. There we go. So refined. And then we can go ahead and attach this to our layout. So I'm just going to add a couple pieces there and I'm not going all the way to the end because I'm actually going to trim this off to suit the size that I want on my card and I know I don't want it to be um, as long as it is and I'm going to just tuck it right down in this corner and usually we don't do that we don't usually stick something right on the corner of the card like that or at least I don't um, but this is how Laura did it, and it just looked so cool. So then I can just flip it over and trim this off from the back side. Just like that, nice and straight. And there we go. We've got our sentiment on there now. And it's okay that it covers up a little part of our fishy. That's quite all right. Our brains kind of fill in the rest of the picture. And then we can add a little bit of bling to it. And I decided for today that I would use my white opal liquid pearls for this because we're under the sea, you know, we've got lots of underwater things happening and that's where you find pearls, right? So let's go ahead and use the white opal pearlescent liquid pearl. <laughs> and I'm going to add a little dot here. I'm going to try to vary the size of my dots. So that's sort of a medium sized dot. Now, I don't know if you've ever used these before, but I'll show you the technique of how I do it. So I try to hold my bottle fairly upright, and then I give it a good squeeze, and I don't smoosh it down onto the paper, and then I give it just a tiny little swirl at the end to kind of knock that pointy top off. And then if I want to make an even bigger one, I can just go ahead and... Just squeeze out a little more, and again, just kind of roll it around in a circle there to knock the pointy tip off. If you still have a pointy tip, the other thing you can do is just to tap it like this. Just gently tap it. It's kind of like um, when you're making macarons, <laughs> and you take your tray and you give it a little tap, 
um, to kind of knock them down a bit. That's what we're doing there. And so now you need to be very careful that you put it aside and you let it sit and you don't stack anything on top of it. <laughs> because if you do, you will squish your liquid pearls before they have set. They take a little while to set. And so I think that is a super fun technique using the washi tape to mask off uh, different shapes. I mean, you could even do like sun rays. You can do all sorts of things. It's very similar to, um, oh, and now I've forgotten the name of it, where you do all sorts of weird angles and you ink and you stamp. It's very similar. It's just that we're going very straight geometric. And I think this is fun, especially for people who don't want to try and color these intricate little images. If maybe you're feeling like your coloring is, you know, not the best coloring, <laughs> kind of like me for most of my life, um, especially coloring with markers. I was not great at it. Our new markers have done wonders for my confidence in coloring. But um, you're just adding a nice little coating of color a little swash of color, and then you're stamping on top. But I like how it maintains that nice crisp whiteness where you don't want any stamping or ink blending. Layering it up with a couple with a piece of black cardstock to create the nice edge and frame, and then the white heat embossing on the black, and then our lovely pearls. And they create quite a bit of dimension. I don't know if you can see that there in the video, but they do stand up very nicely. And they will dry and they will be stuck right on there like you stuck them on with a glue dot. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. And I hope you give that technique a try of masking and then ink blending and then stamping an image on top. And if you do, pop a picture of it in the comments and I would love to see it. All right. Have a wonderful day. Check out the um, challenges that were posted this morning and... Have a lovely crafting day. Hope to see you at 1 o'clock for Chat and Craft. Toodaloo. Bye.